All right, doing this. So this may be one of the hardest videos for me to make. I started and stopped this many times, but I feel it's very important to finally address an experience that not only hurt me mentally, but physically as well. Actually, months of torment, anxiety, and pain. Something so painful that it set my heart out of rhythm. A problem that needed to be corrected last year by burning various parts of my heart just to function normally again. We'll get to more of that later. But not only was I hurt, but it also affected many in the OCD community. As you know, I provide mental health videos. Some of them are very taboo in nature. My goal for this channel is to provide the best accurate and easy to understand topics that are just less talked about. I've noticed very few videos related to certain topics and themes of OCD. While most think OCD is all about washing your hands and staying organized, they miss out on learning the ones that actually can really, really derail somebody's life. One topic that is not talked about very often is called POCD. And I'm not even gonna say the name of the subtype because I've learned that if I do, YouTube has a problem with it. That's how stigmatized this is. In fact, when I posted this video on POCD, I had to sit on a live call with YouTube and watch the video with them. I educated them through the process, used research-based articles, and my own expertise. They understood at the end of all of this that it was OCD and they agreed to keep it on the platform. Many have reached out after this video and told me how it has changed their life. In fact, some decided not to take their own lives due to understanding what they're actually going through now. Like how amazing is that? This taboo topic that takes patients a long time to finally tell their therapist was talked about online in detail. They felt heard and understood. While those in the OCD community understand, not everyone is accepting. You see, someone with millions of followers who I won't name because they don't need any credit took this video and decided to turn it into a political piece. It all started with a tweet. And one of my buddies from high school said, hey, is this you? Plastered on the front page is a picture of me and this specific video with the caption, I hope these individuals burn in the afterlife. Whoa, while many came to my rescue and defended those with OCD, he took it upon himself to take it even a step further. He posted a clip of my video on his show. He shared a very misdirected and uneducated opinion about this subtype of OCD. He attacked me personally and those who have OCD. He also shared very violent remarks towards me and others in the OCD community, but he got away with it because at the end he used the word hypothetically. So I can say anything violent that I want, but at the end I can say hypothetically I want this to happen. There's a problem with that. Let me tell you, my brain broke. Not even broke, it shattered. Here I am doing the best that I can to help as many people as I can. I feel like I'm a kind, gentle, caring person who wants the best for everyone. So to have this type of attack, it hurt me immensely. I didn't sleep, I could hardly eat. My brain was constantly spinning with the what ifs. What if someone who watched this video is a nut and tries to find me in my family? What if this hurts my career? What if I run into this person because I heard they actually live nearby me? What if my channel gets taken down because of a misunderstanding? What if, what if, what if? The cool part is that people are so friendly and they're so nice. I think the most common response that people would say is, you know, even negative publicity is good publicity. Many reached out with kind words. The top OCD therapists in the world had my back. Emails flooded in from those around the world giving me support. Those who watched the videos, therapists, it was amazing. While we know that reassurance can be a good and bad thing, I found for myself that this reassurance only lasted so long. Maybe a few minutes, maybe an hour, then my brain would start spinning all over again. Every message from someone was with good intentions, but it was another trigger. I was struggling. I even debated deleting my whole channel knowing how many of my videos people could just destroy me with, using it out of context. But I persevered, <laughs> knowing that the only thing keeping me sane was the ability to continue helping people. Seeing clients in my office was my fuel for getting better. Continuing to make videos helped. Knowing the struggle that they are going through and continuing to help helped me to give this service to others. So it's interesting that somebody's comments can cause so much turmoil in my life. Everything became a trigger. 
titles of movies, the picture behind me in the video that he shared this clip with and said all these violent remarks, the chair I was sitting in when I first watched the video, the feelings that I received when I first heard it, even anyone who had the same name as this person. And definitely a trigger is having to tell this story over and over and over again because many asked. And I told him the story through a smile but I wasn't smiling. If you attended the International OCD Foundation Conference this year, it was in Denver, you would have seen me crying. They asked me to share this experience. Run the clip. Gotcha. No, I don't have a clip of this. Why would I have a clip of this? And I wouldn't show you anyway. You see me smiling though? Like this right now is a real smile. You see, it took me months to recover and I'm still not 100%. At the OCD conference, I was struggling. I even had a panic attack the first night knowing that there were going to be people coming up to me asking me about this experience and I knew that I had to talk about it. I hardly slept. And guess what? I don't have panic attacks. So that was a new one for me. Lots of fake smiles through the pain. But the video is not all about being a downer. I felt this drive to make this video and share how raw life experiences can be and be open because I know that the more we talk about these experiences, the better we get. Here's how I got better. This is the important part. I stopped doing the compulsion. I stopped avoiding the conversations, the emails, the comments, all of the exposures regarding the story. I started challenging the anxiety thoughts with responses like, yep, anything's possible. Sure, that could happen. Maybe, maybe not. I gave myself a break. I deleted all my social media apps from my phone. I gave myself space to live. I controlled what I have control over. But when the brain goes through this type of trauma, it doesn't want to let it go. But here's the part that I feel is important to mention. I did these exposures. I worked through the moment. I tried so hard to move past this and I was still struggling. So guess what I did? I started taking a low dose of medication to help me with this process. That's hard for me to say. I'm such an advocate for medication when it comes to anxiety and OCD because I've seen it do wonders for so many people I work with. But when it came to me, I was like, heck no, there's no way I'm doing that. I'm not that bad, but I took the plunge. And this was the missing piece. I told myself, okay, I'm doing the exposures. I'm challenging my thoughts. I'm using mindfulness. I'm still struggling. I would say literally this missing piece changed my life. It changed the way I see the situation. That is why I'm making this video right now. There's no way, even a few weeks ago, I ever thought about making this video. So much anxiety, my heart's out of rhythm. It was painful. I want to lead by example, face a fear and uncertainty and move forward. Like this is an exposure. You share this vulnerability and to share this anxiety with you. So while it seems online that everyone has it figured out but you, just know we're all just winging it. Seriously, you see all these great people online and you see all these social media, whatever, whatever, and you're like, man, their life is great. I don't think that's accurate. It's, it's been helpful for me to remind myself Everyone is winging it. Where my anxiety was a 10 out of 10 most of the day for weeks, it is now hardly anything. I can say this person's name. I can go out. I can talk about this story. I'm talking about it right now. My heart's not beating super fast. That's what it did before. It beats so fast every time I talked about this story and it would not go back in rhythm. So here's what I want you to really get out of this video. The point isn't to call someone out who grossly misunderstood OCD. While it's easy to say, yeah, they deserve it, it's to urge you to take time to understand others. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Even let people make mistakes. We all are going to make mistakes. Don't judge. Love each other. Be kind. Sometimes the first thought that comes in our brain is not the right one. The first opinion is not the right one. Most of all, seek help if you need it. Anxiety is no joke. Do what you need to get better. As I learned, the weighted out method just sometimes doesn't work. I hope this video inspired you and I feel blessed to be able to share my experiences with you. Do something meaningful today that reminds you of this joy the world can bring.